Hey everybody, it's Angie, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. It's only a couple of days into 2019 and things are going good and bad for me. <laughs> um, Just really, really great days and really, really crazy days. I don't know how y'all 2019, even in the news, even with our president here in America, it's just a lot of craziness, a lot of things going on with celebrities. I mean, it's just it's just wild so far. Um, but I hope everyone has an amazing 2019. Um, I'm going to be chiming in back and forth. I don't want to lose my following. I love you guys. Um, so here's the deal. I still do take donations. If you want to send a donation to me, my cash app and my PayPal information will either be in my description bar or in the comments section. Um, you send a donation to me and you, I email you. And when I email you, I'm going to ask you, do you have a topic or do you have um, a situation that you're personally going through? And I'll do your own video response to your situation or to your question. You can check my other videos and I've done many before and I haven't had any complaints so far. Okay, so um, I'm going to be doing narcissistic videos and all different spiritual videos, astrology videos, all different kind of videos in 2019. Hopefully you will continue to follow me, but if not, I'm thankful that you stuck in there with me um, for as long as you did. Okay, please be patient with me. I am still going through some situations with my health, legal issues, you know, just all kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm a little stressed, but I'm extremely blessed, especially in comparison to all the crazy things that's going on in this world. We have to, you know, um, be grateful for... Um, what we have and don't focus on what you don't have and I've been also focusing on the law of attraction and renewing my mind and that's something that a lot of people who have dealt with trauma childhood trauma narcissistic abuse needs to do and that's how you can renew your mind and you know write down have a gratitude journal notebook piece of paper whatever you want and instead of focusing on your issues or your trauma you know the things that happened in your past write down things that you are thankful for now it don't even matter if you're just thankful that you had a piece of gum this morning that can be something that you're grateful for i apologize for the lightning as i said before i have horrible lighting in my bedroom so just excuse it i'll try to do more videos during daylight um but I'm such a night owl so my juices start flowing you know in my mind at night so that's the reason why I like to record at night before I go to sleep okay but yes it is very important through your healing from narcissistic abuse that you write down things that you are grateful for and you don't focus on the shit that happened to you pretty much and it starts to renew your mind and it has worked for me and I'm noticing that I'm getting more um things that I feel I deserve um and that I've been asking for you know from God from the universe I have been getting it because I I believe that I am and that's the thing about it narcissistic abuse puts you in this mindset where you don't even believe that you deserve anything and it does take time to renew your mind, but I think they say what it takes 21 days to um, to change your mind and to get into a routine of something. So 21 days, try it, or for 30 days, just in case you need an extra couple of days. Right, only things and only speak positively because when you speak it, your brain will react to it. Okay and narcissistic abuse trauma whatever it is that you suffer from um has literally effed your mind up okay it really has and um it, it has energetically caused you to be negative to yourself and um it's time for that change okay so if you want 
positivity back into your life or um, you basically want change, this is the things that you have to do. Yes, healing, it takes work period. You don't want to do the work, then you stay in your misery. But if you do want to heal and you um, you do want to see changes in your life, you do want to heal from narcissistic abuse, you have to put in the work. No, it is not your fault that you suffered these things, but it's now your responsibility to heal and to change now that you are aware of um, what you have suffered from. Okay, so this video is going to be pretty quick, but I, I don't know. I was just thinking about how narcissists work with patterns and I, how I just said, if it takes 21 days to develop a habit or to break a habit, it's crazy how, you know, dealing with the narcissist has literally altered us in that way. And when you think about your experience with narcs, there was always a pattern, always a pattern. And because, you know, the narcissist, um, the narcissist studied you and they know that you have hope and they know that you're stuck on the person who they were in the beginning, whether this was your lover, a friend or your parent, or, you know, if, if it was a narcissistic parent, you are trying to get that parent to love you. Okay, so what I've noticed, it was always a pattern with these damn narcs and you didn't notice it after a while because you got used to the pattern. Basically, they did this over and over and over and over again to you. I mean, I'm sure there was people around you that might that might have said it. There was only one friend of mine who um, it was crazy because she thought I was the negative one when I wasn't. <laughs> I was the victim, you know. I, I don't want to say it was a victim, but I was the one who was dealing with so many narcs. So be, the narcs had me looking crazy. So she's wondering what's wrong with her to why she would sit there and let these people do these things to her. They, I think she started to think she must be doing something to them too. And one day she was like, don't you get it? Don't you see? Like, they did this last time. It's a pattern. Like, you always come to me. You always tell me that they did this, this, and that. And then you just go back. And yo, I really, like, when you're dealing with the narc, you really don't notice these things. You don't notice that, yo, that you've been going through this Oh, yo, the narc literally puts you through the same routine and cycle over and over again, okay? Y'all argue about the same things. They disrespect you in the same way, sometimes just with different people, sometimes with the same people. They do the sh same shit repetitively, and you just keep taking it. Why? Because you're hoping that one day you're enough you're hoping that they'll go back to the person that you thought they were. Um, you think that there's something that you did to make them change. Um, and this is all from them telling you different things through time. Um, you know, they idolized you in the beginning. And then now it's like you're any, all the things that they worshipped in you. Now it's all of a sudden it's a problem. Okay. And this is why you don't notice the pattern. But if you are someone who is still dealing with narcissists or you think somebody's a narcissist, I'm telling you, start writing down the things that you argued with the narc or you're still presently arguing with the narc about. Um, even time when they leave you. Now, this is something that I, I'm going to give you an example. This is something that I dealt with when I had a narc best friend. And when I think about it, this boy put me through so like many different patterns okay so in the beginning with my narc best friend he idolized me oh you're so pretty i like your hair i like this you're gorgeous doesn't matter if you're overweight you're this you're that um you know my mother didn't love me you love me you know better than my own family you're this you're this and that and it's, it's in and this is all the things that the narc do in the beginning 
they build your confidence up because you never had that before. Most likely, if you get in bamboozled by a narc, that means that you were raised by a narc, you were surrounded by narcs, you have friends who are narcs. This isn't something that just happened to you. This is something that was a pattern from your childhood, okay? And, or it means that you have low self-esteem, okay? Or you have something that's unhealed from your past, from your childhood. And this is the only reason why the narc is able to get into that crack. So when you meet them, they're building your confidence up, they're building your ego up, or they're rocking you to sleep, like, um, what's his name, uses that term, um, what the heck is that man's name, um, ASC Direct, <laughs> his name is Quinn, he, he uses the term that narc rocks you to sleep, and it's so true, they rock you to sleep, they, they, um, they say all these great things, you know, compliments to you, and, all these sweet nothings to you and they build you up in the area that you had insecurity in okay and they rock you to sleep pretty much then they move on to they devalue you okay in this stage you're still stuck on oh you're so great I found my soul friend I found my soul me my twin flame I found this amazing person like there must be something I did why because in the beginning you were that insecure child you were that broken person when they met you you may not think you were but you had something inside of you that was unhealed okay or you were insecure about something subconsciously or consciously okay so that subconscious person didn't get healed I mean that that insecure person in your subconscious did not get healed. So you go to, hmm, what did I do for this person to treat me this way? Why are they treating me this way? And you're still stuck on the representative, the, the mask, the demon that the narc um, introduced you to, okay? So you're still stuck on that. But then they take off their mask for the big value in. And you're not recognizing this person. You're like, you're you're not you're never gonna think this person's a manip manipulator, this person's a narcissist, a sociopath. You're not thinking that. You're thinking because you're insecure or you're broken, you're unhealed from your childhood, whatever it is, you had that little scar there that wasn't healed. You're thinking, damn, what did I do? How can I get back the person that they was stroking me, they was rocking me to sleep? Because you're still stuck in that simulation. You're still stuck in in that that dream that they created for you and you and them. Okay? So they rocking you to sleep. This is a pattern too. It's in stages. If this was never in a pattern, psychologists wouldn't never been able to break this shit down and put it in a textbook, okay? So they build you up, they devalue you, okay? And some of us do pick up on it and some of us we gonna fight them okay that's what i did i would throw things at him i would attack him i would curse him out i fought back okay but i wasn't fully healed i still wanted that representation of who i thought he was so i did all of that and when i did all the fighting and the screaming the cursing out and all of that and showing all that emotion keep in mind a narc needs you to do all that because that's how they know if there is no emotion at all the narc will disappear because they know that they don't have you okay so i did all of that screaming and doing this and doing that all that crap right so then when he got all the emotions that he needed oh yeah i got her this is what the narc is thinking i got them hmm. all right they do that silent treatment shit on you. They stop answering your texts. They stop answering your calls. And again, you're back in that mental state of confusion. Oh my gosh, it's like a drug. Oh my goodness, you start panicking. Why are you not answering me? Why you don't want to talk to me? Why you don't want to see me? Everything is you trying to please the narc. Everything is you trying to get back that person, that narc. The person who was rocking you to sleep. 
You're not thinking about the manipulator. You're not thinking about the person who just automatically took the mask off and changed. You're thinking about stage one. You need to get that fixed. You need to get back, okay? So then, chances are, maybe a couple of days go by, maybe a few weeks. Even for some people, it's been a couple of months. You're still thinking about that narc. You're still thinking that you have this soul connection. You have, you know, you finally found everything that you wanted to find in a friend or whatever the case is. Then the narc just pops up. And, you know, every narc is different. There's going to be a narc that comes to you and says, hmm, you know what? I had some time to think and, you know, you was right. Okay, and this happened with me and my my ex narc best friend. You know what? You're right. We have something special. You're my soul friend, or you're gonna hear you're my soulmate, or you know what? I can't. If it's your parent, you know what? This is your home. This is where you belong. Okay, this is what you're gonna hear from the narc. And they're not gonna say I'm sorry per se. You might hear them actually say the words I'm sorry, but me. Out of the hundred narcs that I have been around, I probably only heard maybe three out of a hundred that actually used the words, I apologize, I'm sorry. You're going to hear like, you know what? Or they'll say, you know, you were right. Or they'll beat around taking accountability for what they did. And you're not even thinking about all the stuff that they did to build you up to your craziness. Okay? You're not even thinking about that. All you want is just to heavy up, get back in line, and get back to how y'all were. That's all you're worried about. You're not worried about what they did to you, who they cheated with, they stole your money, you know, they, they betrayed. You're not thinking about none of the negative stuff. All you want to do is rush back in line in order. And this happens multiple times times over and oh this happened to me so many times and I took the narc back in I took this narc best friend back in every time every time every time I mean keep in mind he was in my life for eight years okay I think the longest we parted was maybe six six months or nine months was the longest that we parted and when he came back it was either you know what I finally see what you were saying and I'm I've I've matured now and I've grown up or he would say you know what let's just forget about everything we went through you know why we went through that we went through that because we really love each other we really are meant to be in each other's lives when I tell you I ate that shit up, okay, it looked like it was a movie. He really should get into acting. That's how good this this young man was, okay? And this, I'm sure, has happened. Some of you are probably watching this video like, wait a minute. Hmm, that's happening to me right now. Hmm, that happened to me multiple times. Don't feel stupid. Don't feel bad about it because it's happened to me too. And the thing about it is you part for so long. It's kind of like like a drug and you are. Like I repeated this in my other video about how you are literally chemically, you know, mentally, psych psychologically, you are addicted. You literally are addicted to the narc. And I believe some of the narcs be addicted to you. They need you. You don't really need them. You don't need narcs. They need other people to survive. The truth is you don't. This is an illusion you think you do. It's something that you are used to and you've come accustomed to. And it's all it's all a game. It's all a mental game. It's all a spiritual attachment to hold you back, okay, from the chosen um, path that the creator has chosen for you. That's that's what I feel. I feel that's the reason why narcs come into our lives. Narcs come into our lives to teach us lessons, um, to show us the pain and the hurt, you know, different areas that we haven't healed from. 
I believe NARS come into our lives, you know, to take because we have, we have a calling, we have a path, you know, um, no matter what it is, and they're there to derail us from our path, okay, so I'm thankful for it, now when I think about it, I am very grateful, I can, I can see photos of these narcs that were in my life, and I don't feel like, ooh, or, or, you know, I look, and it's almost like I don't, I actually feel sorry for them, or, When I look at their photos, I'm like, hmm, I don't think anything. It's almost like I'm looking at a total stranger. Um, But narcs have patterns. And this is another reason why this works on our psyche. Because it's something that happens to us continuously. The same arguments and, and, and the same abusive patterns. And we don't notice it because it's like, it just happens repetitively. Um, so if you are watching this video and you are dealing with narcs still, I need you to admit to yourself, damn, this might be a narc and start writing down even time frames and what exactly that they do when they return back to you. Um, it's not healthy and I'm getting sick and tired. You know what? <laughs> I'm not knocking any any religions because I'm not religious. You know, I was Christian for many, many years. I was Christian up until I was about 25, 26, and I'm 35 now. Um, but um, something that I noticed, and it's got to stop. Like, I noticed this. There's a pastor out there named John Gray, and I think his wife's name is Aventer. And, um, there's a video going around because this pastor was talking about how, um, he cheated on his wife. Okay. You can look, you can look them up or whatever. And it's, it, you know, this pastor actually went down to sit, he sat down with Trump a few months ago. I don't know. After that, after I saw this pastor do that, I was just like, yo, I'm done. But this is, this is something narcissistic. I noticed this is kind of off topic, but, um, something I want to say, and I think that. This happens a lot in Christianity or other religions is you do not have to take abuse. You don't have to take these patterns, okay? But anyway, um, they were telling the pastor John Gray and his wife Aventer, they were talking to a congregation of people. And he admitted, the pastor admitted that he cheated on his wife okay and the wife when she told her side of the story she said I wasn't gonna let the devil win I wasn't gonna let the devil win you know when he was 16 he couldn't get any girls and he let the wrong people get close to him and he cheated on me and I wasn't gonna let that woman take everything I built up for and and when I started thinking about that I started thinking about that's how I felt with all the narcs. You get into this state of mind of everything you built on with that narc. Listen, listen, listen. And they kept saying the devil, the devil wasn't going to win. I wasn't going to let the devil win. And everything that I built on and everything I went through with this man. And I took him back because the devil wasn't going to get my marriage. And I'm, look, I'm like, what? She blamed everything on the devil. Sometimes the devil is yourself, okay? And we do this a lot. No, we don't do this a lot. We do this with the narcissist. We don't even let them take accountability. We we blame it on the devil. We blame it on ourselves. But we never say, you know what? It's you. Sometimes it's you who's the devil. What? No, 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 Instead of this pastor taking accountability for his cheating, saying, yo, I had a weakness, I was wrong, I played myself, I almost, I violated my wife, and, you know, men out there, if you really want your family, don't do this. Like, he didn't do none of that. He didn't do any of that. He let his wife stand there 
and defend him and say it was the devil. So I fought for my husband. What? And this is what we do with the knocks. And I, I used to do this all the time. I used to be like, oh, I'm praying. This is when I was Christian. I'm praying for him. Talking about my knock best friend. And I know that that God is going to save him. And this and that. Listen, 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 listen. To this day, that young man is the same person. Okay? Call it what it is. Sometimes, no, that, that narc is the devil. Okay? And we have to stop making excuses for toxic relationships. Stop holding on to toxic people. Stop making excuses. Just stop. Stop. Blaming yourself for negative behavior. Especially when you sit back and you're like, man, I've only been good to this person and this person's violating me. Straight up violating me. I'm not saying that people should just leave their husband or wife because they cheated once. I'm not saying that. I think that's a personal um, decision for people to do in their marriage. But my point is, why are you blaming the devil? Take accountabilities and narcissists never take accountability. They never take a they never take accountability. You know, a guy that I was seeing a couple of months ago, well, like last year sometime, I think I told y'all this story where I had this narc friend who decided six months after I was seeing a guy to tell me that she slept with him years ago. And she got cut off. But I didn't cut the guy off. But anyway, long story short, I believe the guy was a narcissist too. Instead of that narcissistic guy saying, you know what? I should have told you that I slept with your friend 10 years ago. You know, but I didn't want to tell you because I thought that that was going to mess up our chance. My chance of getting to know you more. I'm not going to say that. This fool said to me. Oh, it was 10 years ago. What? And that's something a narc will do. Never take accountability for it. She didn't take accountability. She was like, oh, I didn't think it was important for me to tell you. She didn't even say sorry. Narc, get out of my life. Him, the same thing. At first, I didn't pick up on it like that. I picked up on it, but I was just like, you know what? Let me, let me see first. Let me see how he flow after a couple of months. But every time the conversation would come up, it was just like, you still on that? Like, he never apologized. Like, what? Like, man, she don't mean nothing to me. That was 10 years ago. He never apologized. Never, ever. And I believe he was a narcissist as well. You know, so the thing about it is it's like, there's no accountability with these narcissists, you know? And when I saw that, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but when I saw that conversation of that pastor, I was just like, this guy's a fucking narc. This dude is a narc, and she definitely is an empath, and she's sitting there, you know, she may not, may not even be an empath. She's just weak, okay? And she's sitting there making excuses for her husband and because he bought her a $200,000 Lamborghini, like, are you serious? And and this is the things that we have done and the positions that we have placed ourselves in these toxic relationships and these relationships with these narcs. Stop making excuses for toxic behavior. Stop taking accountability for shit that other people are doing, okay? And pay attention to the patterns of behavior with people. Um, they don't change and they don't apologize. Nothing ever changes. Okay. When I was done with my narc best friend, I mean, he would be on his best behavior for two weeks and go right back to the bullshit. It's that quick with these motherfuckers. Excuse my language. I just get a little hype when I talk about narcissists. (laughs) It is absolutely like it, it happens within seconds. It's almost, I used to be like five, four, three, two, one. They can't stay straight and narrow. These narcs cannot stay on a straight and narrow. They have to be within that corrupted spirit. 
because why it is a demonic possession it is a spirit that is um living in them that's controlling their life that's controlling their every move and they can't stay right with you all right i'm at 30 minutes i don't want to go over 30 minutes in my videos anymore Thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I'm going to continue to do more videos. Hopefully this video was entertaining to you or helpful to you in your journey of healing from narcissistic abuse or for going no contact with a narc. All right. Peace and blessings. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.